Digimon Liberator, which is a webcomic based on the currently running Digimon card game, has just started on Digimon.net, and honestly further cements my belief that Bandai's main focus for the franchise is currently the Digimon TCG. So let's talk about how this webcomic is so far. But first, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, Zenin TCG. Zenin TCG is your one-stop shop for all of your Digimon needs. And of course, where you can pre-order all the newly announced Pendulum Color Wave 2s. You can find them on their website, which is zenintcg.com. And you can also follow them on their Instagram, Facebook and Twitter by searching for zenintcg.sg. Please keep in mind that Zen and TCG is a small store based in Singapore and every pre-order has to arrive in Singapore from Japan prior to them shipping it out to you. This usually means a shipment date of a week or two after the official release date in Japan for any of the pre-order releases such as the Digimon Pendulum Color Wave 2s. However, they do have a lot of other anime merchandise and other virtual pets and toys that are ready to ship out. So check them out, especially with all the new exclusive merch that are currently in store and ready in to order and ship. The new releases that I want to talk about today are, firstly, the second wave of the Digimon Pendulum Color, which are the Wind Guardians, Metal Empire and Virus Busters versions. These are set for a release date of about September to October 2024. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Digimon Virtual Pets and I love what Bandai are doing with the colour releases of the older models. I love the Pendulum Colour series, I think it's a great addition to the franchise and I'm glad to see these get announced and I really do hope that Bandai continue on with other colour releases. I'm really holding out for a Pendulum Progress colour, I think that'd be fantastic. Secondly, Zen and TCG have also come out with their own Pendulum V-Pet protective cases. So they're releasing their own premium durable cases for your Digimon Virtual Pets. In addition to these upcoming Pendulum V-Pet cases, Zen and TCG also have the Digimon Brick type V-Pet cases as well. So make sure to check out Zen and TCG and the product links in the description of this video. And now, Let's talk about Digimon Liberator. The first thing that I noticed straight away is that it's kind of amusing in a sad way I guess that the characters in Digimon Liberator are playing a virtual and online game of the TCG despite one surprisingly still not existing in real life other than a very bare bones how to play mobile phone game which is just a how to play the TCG and more of an introduction than anything else. The next thing that I noticed, which is somewhat related to the how to play, is that the webcomic actually seems to follow the actual gameplay mechanics of the TCG and it honestly reads kind of like a how to play the card game but in webcomic format. They explain the mechanics and they go into detail about the gameplay and how to play. This kind of surprised me as Digimon Tamers, which featured the old Digimon TCG, was rather vague about the actual mechanics of the card game. They used real cards that did exist in the Hyper Coliseum card game in Digimon Tamers, but they never really went into detail about how to actually play. Digimon Liberator, at least so far, actually has explained how to play the game and the different mechanics. They've gone the different phases, and oh, it's still his turn, he's now regaining priority, and it's it's very much like a uh, an introduction on actually how to play the game. I do know how to play the game, even though I don't play the game, I do know how to play it, and I'm also kind of wondering how this part of the webcomic appeals to someone who hasn't who doesn't know anything about the game. Is it kind of still a little bit confusing? Like, what's a breeding phase? They don't really go into exactly how to play but at least from someone who has like a passing knowledge of how to play the game it seems to be quite kind of involved and I can see why Bandai are doing that it seems like 
it's uh it, I can imagine this getting people into the card game because of how like it's showing how to play the card game so I'm wondering if, if that's kind of on purpose that they're not just being vague like they were in Digimon Tamers they're actually going into detail about the mechanics and gameplay of the Digimon card game so that's something that I noticed speaking of Tamers a character appears just in the background with an incredibly striking resemblance to Rookie from Digimon Tamers, which is kind of a cute nod, and I wonder if we'll get any other cute Easter eggs like this from the webcomic. Again, this is something that I mentioned in my videos for Digimon Dreamers and Digimon Seekers, but I like when Digimon don't try to pander 100% to existing fans. They make something that can be completely enjoyed by somebody with literally zero knowledge about the franchise, but they still put in these little easter eggs that an older fan will understand, but will just mean absolutely nothing and won't distract the new person at all, because they won't even notice that something like in that case exists, such as a background character just existing that happens to look a lot like Rookie slash Rika from Digimon Tamers. So that's a cute nod, and I hope we get more of those. Big fan of that kind of easter eggs for the older fans. Also, on the topic of Digimon Tamers, I've seen people trying to make the point that it feels like a spiritual successor, or even a sequel to Digimon Tamers. However, honestly, the story so far more so reminds me of the manga Digimon Next, which takes place in a virtual reality arcade game. The only difference is that while Liberator uses the card game, Next uses the virtual pets, which again shows how Bandai's focus for the franchise has shifted from its beginnings as a virtual pet franchise, and now it seems to really focus on the TCG the most out of all the different ways to enjoy Digimon. Overall, so far the story is fun, the English translation is good, and the art style is really cute and really unique, but it still looks like Digimon. It hasn't strayed too far away from how one would picture what a Digimon comic or manga or anime would look like, and that's really great. There's also meant to be a Digimon Liberator novel coming out, but it's going to have a more spaced out release date with one chapter every three months as opposed to Digimon Seekers, which was one chapter segment every week. So I'm looking forward to that. I'd be interested to do an audio reading like I did for Digimon Seekers, so let me know what your thoughts about that are, because I really did actually enjoy doing the Digimon Seekers web novel reading for the podcast in the audio form. So that was really fun. So that's something also to look forward to from Digimon Liberator. So yes, I'm a big fan of the story so far, the art style is really cute, and I honestly look forward to seeing how the story progresses, and I absolutely recommend checking it out if you haven't already. I also hope that this webcomic does well enough that Bandai actually gives us an online virtual version of the TCG, seeing as it only becomes clearer and clearer that the card game is the part of the franchise that Bandai is focusing on the most for the Digimon property. Again. I know how to play the card game, but I haven't really played that much. But if Bandai came out with an an online or virtual version where I could play it on my phone or Switch, but I would guess phone would be probably more likely, I would definitely, definitely really get into it if it was available just on my phone. So that is something that I hope that Bandai does see a need for, especially if this is their focus now, especially since it appears that the Vardal Bracelet's lifespan is over, as it has been several years, and we don't know any new releases for the Vardal Bracelet. It's not being featured in Digimon Liberator. There's a new Digivice, which is just a deck box. So it would be interesting to see once that Vardal Bracelet app eventually shuts down, which I feel like its days are numbered. I'm wondering if it will be replaced by something that is more like a, a virtual TCG app for the Digimon card game, but we can but hope. Anyway, the last thing I want to say is that I'm super glad that Bandai have seen Digimon.net as a way of giving the fans of the franchise content, especially because it's being released in English and for free and online on Digimon.net, like Seekers, like Dreamers. 
However, it does make me concerned as we recently saw that Digimon Dreamers, once it had its Volume 2 release in Japan, Digimon Dreamers was more or less removed from Digimon.net except for the first few chapters, which is a shame because there's no official English version of it. I kind of expected, and as of recording this, this is still the case, I'm ho hopefully going to be proven wrong, but it would have been nice if they just changed it to, you have to pay like a dollar per, per chapter, so that's like $20 for the whole thing, or just over $20, so less than 30 So that would have been like a better way of the, than just completely removing it. They would still get money from it, and they'd get the money from the English-speaking fans, not just the Japanese fans, who can actually buy the manga. Of course, I imported it, but I'm not just going to say, hey, everyone, just learn Japanese, it's fine. Because that would have been a better decision just to have it available to purchase for like a few dollars online rather than just removing it completely. That is a shame. Digimon Liberator of course could be online for until Bandai gets bored of it in 10 years or it can be shut down as soon as it gets a physical release. As of recording this there's no news of a physical release so maybe we'll never get one but that's the only danger of it having it being online rather than something that you have to like physically buy. It just means that it's online for as long as it's online until the property owners, in this case Bandai, decide to remove it. Which is the only bad thing about it being online for free in English is that it's, it might not be there forever and it probably won't be because something else will replace it one day and that's just the sad case with this kind of thing. In any case, those are my thoughts about Digimon Liberator. Again, I highly suggest checking it out if you haven't already. Even if you don't know anything about Digimon or webcomics or the Digimon TCG, I'd still recommend checking it out. I'm honestly surprised about the chapter length. I thought that the chapters would be a lot shorter, like, you know, a few minutes reading it. But it's they're actually quite long for each chapter, at least so far with Chapter 0 and Chapter 1. So... That's also pretty great as well. But in any case, those are my thoughts about Digimon Liberator. Let me know your thoughts, comments, questions, etc. etc. in the comments section below. Like this video for the hope, the belief, the holding on to anything that Bandai will make this kind of actual online virtual ability game thing to play the Digimon card game online, not just in webcam tournaments or physically in person. So, like this video for that. Subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have subscribed, tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell your enemies, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!